2021, I think the Fed did a great job when we were facing a black hole in COVID in 2020. Uh, they took some very aggressive actions. One of those actions was for guidance where they to try and settle markets guided ahead to basically a zero interest rate policy. I think it's for was frankly for three years. Um, we were all fooled by COVID. I was too. When when it first happened, we're wondering, you know, are we sinking into a black hole? But it was pretty obvious, I'd say a month or two after vaccine confirmation, which was the fall of 20, that we weren't going into a black hole. Unemployment, which I think had been around 14 percent, started to drop precipitously. The economy came back. Um, we wrote the article in the spring of 21 because at this point, we felt we were like booming and it was it was everywhere in the economy and the companies we talked to and unemployment rate everywhere. And the Fed wasn't adjusting. So they were buying, I think, 120 billion a month at securities. It might have been down to 95 a month by that time period. And rates were still zero. And I think had they had a clean slate, they would have never been buying bonds to that degree with what was going on in the economy but they were trapped, in my opinion, by forward guidance. It's pretty incredible. From, from the point we wrote the article, when it was so obvious that we even wrote about it, um, it was 13 months from when inflation went through 2% to when they finally raised rates. They also bought $2 trillion in bonds during that period. Um, so I guess the reason I analogize it to today and it, it's quite different. I had a lot of confidence then that they were wrong on inflation. The money supply was growing at 40%. As I said, the economy was booming. This one's much more nuanced. However, um, just look at the asymmetry here. Back then, you go 13 months with inflation through the target, goes up to 8.5%, and you still go another three months, and you're keeping rates at zero and you're buying bonds like crazy. And then you, um, when you finally move, you move 25 basis points. And your rationale is, we need to see the whites of inflation's eyes. And you're saying this one's three or four or 5%. Okay, today, um, we're still quite a bit above target, depending on which measure you use, somewhere between two and a half and three and a quarter. Uh, the economy, they've come up with this I guess theory that monetary policy is restrictive because of real inflation rates. But I don't really go by theory. I'm a market animal. Frankly, we've found over the years that markets are better predictors than uh, professors. And when I look at, look at the landscape, equities at a record high, gold at a record high, GDP above trend, credit tight, um, bank earnings and forecasts look good. Um, we don't see any restriction whatsoever. Crypto going crazy, you name it. So all of a sudden, the crowd that said they wanted to uh, see the whites of inflation's eyes and they wanted to be data dependent as opposed to forward looking are now cutting 50 basis points, not a quarter, which is what they started of. And we're not even to target yet. And this is all on the theory that monetary policy is restrictive. So what I would say is this, I don't have the conviction I had in 21 that we wrote that article that the Fed is gonna be wrong, but on a risk reward basis, I just doesn't, I don't think it makes any sense at all to, to lay out the cards they've laid out and commit themselves through forward guidance once again. And what I, what I was trying to say when I was saying um, it reminds me of 21, is I just hope if the data don't go with them, and they certainly haven't since they started this narrative, they adjust this time and they're not trapped by the forward guidance the way they were in 21. 1970s, inflation came down from a remarkably similar level to where it was in 21. I think 21 peaked at nine, I think it was eight back in the 70s. They came down to three. The Fed was easing because they, they had the 75 recession. So the Fed started easing and inflation went right back up to, I think it peaked at a 12% when Volcker came in and smashed it. I'm not predicting that, but when you're easing into a melt up in financial markets, 
and we have the fiscal policy we have going forward, it's certainly a risk. And I just, I think it's a mistake not to be taking that risk into account. I don't really understand the rush of 50 basis points, and then I think that markets have priced in a 97% cut uh, at the next meeting. That's all through Fed guidance. It's funny, my, my friend Jim Grant, who's one of my favorite writers, said they're not really data dependent, they're forward guidance dependent. And that's what they're showing again. And look, he might be right, and I hope he is right, but it's a big risk because if in fact they're wrong and inflation takes off because monetary policy is in fact not restrictive and we have fiscal expansion going on and they have to tighten again, I think it could be a, it could be a nightmare for markets and maybe even for the independence of the Fed. You can't, you can't make multiple mistakes that the, that, that would have been. But I'm not predicting it, I'm just saying, why did they go 50 and why do they need this forward guidance? Well, I think a shadow Fed and this kind of talk is a horrible idea and irresponsible. However, I think were Trump to be elected, the institution will hold. Um, I think a bigger threat to the Fed would, would be major, major mistakes by the Fed. I think the Fed is obsessed with soft landings and fine tuning. To me, that's not the real job. The real job is to avoid the kind of problems we had with the great financial crisis, which in my opinion were because the Fed was too easy going into them, created a housing bubble. And then obviously after COVID, not the initial actions, but sticking with it for a year and a half or two years, buying bonds uh, with the money supply exploding. To me, um, they've got to stop the fine tuning and start looking at the bigger picture. and. Committing yourselves now, and then if they stick to four guidance and inflation starts going up again, that could lead to a hard landing, not a soft landing. It's an evolving situation. I, if you had asked me this 12 days ago, I would have said, I don't have a clue, it's in a total cost up. I still don't have conviction who's gonna win on the election. But as I said earlier, I like market indicators for the economy and for financial restrictiveness. I also like them for elections. I remember how right the market was on Ronald Reagan in 1980, despite what the pundits were saying. And I must say in the last 12 days, the market and the inside of the market um, is very convinced Trump is going to win. You can see it in the bank stocks, you can see it in crypto, you can even see it in DJT, his social media company. But throughout the whole, I would say the industries that are deregulated, if we had deregulations, will benefit tr from Trump or outperform the others. So if you put a gun to my head, and thank God there's not one to my head, so this really doesn't matter, I would say that um, I, I would have to guess Trump is the favorite to win the election now, but who knows what these polls even mean? No one even responds to them anymore. But um, that's what we're looking at. I think. The delta between, let's say, four outcomes, blue sweep, red sweep, uh, Trump with a, with a blue branch of Congress, uh, Harris with a red branch of Congress. Um, first of all, I think the blue sleep sweep is extremely unlikely. Even if Harris wins the presidency, uh, looking at state by state polls, it, it looks like the Republicans are going to win the Senate. Um, where you get a blue sweep, I think just the math of taxes, um, business confidence, lack of animal, animal spirits, um, no change in the regulation front in investors' minds, you could get a, you, you would have a rough time for equities, I would think for three to six months. I think this would probably translate in the economy because equity ownership is 25% of financial assets at an all-time high. That was 15% just not that long ago. So that's a blue sweep. But the good news or the bad news, depending on how you view life, is I think it's highly unlikely. So that playbook is probably going to be irrelevant. A red sweep, which I think is probably more likely than a Trump presidency with a um, with a blue Congress, because personally, I think anybody that votes for Trump is probably not gonna switch their, change their ballot um, 
for a Democrat in Congress, a red sweep, I think you get animal spirits in the business community, you get deregulation, um, and there might be some sort of um, uplift relative to where they were in, in terms of the business community. So I think the economy could be potentially stronger for three to six months. Um, my fear would be because of those reasons and because I think bond yields already don't reflect a proper economic outlook, you would probably get a bad response in the fixed income markets, which could then snuff out the equity rally. But any view we have at Duquesne Family Office the, where we're worried about bonds, we're not playing it through the stock market, we're playing it through the bond market. If, if you want to go after the cause rather than the symptoms, there still look like there's stocks and things to do. I also think under a red sweep, the Fed, for the reasons I just elucidated and maybe because of past relationships, would be much more hawkish than they would be under a Harris administration. So I think that would all be in our playbook and the responses to it. Under a Harris administration with a Republican Congress, probably not a lot of change from the landscape we currently have in terms of trying to figure out what's going to happen.